Welcome to the first lesson guys. So in this lesson I will introduce you to MS-DOS. So you start what is MS-DOS first you want to know. So MS-DOS is an acronym that stands for Microsoft Disk Operating System and it was first created for the IBM PCs in the early 1980s. And DOS before Windows was an essential operating system. People was were using DOS and those is different from windows because windows here uses the gui which is called graphic user interface but those uses what is called cli it's a command line interface which you only enter commands and it will execute the commands but in windows we use the gui which we use the menus the boxes the icons but in those you only type commands and Nowadays Windows is independent of those it can operate by itself. So now we have to know the benefits of using MS-DOS. First of all, if you know how to use MS-DOS, you can do ethical hacking. You can play with the system files. You can penetrate Windows user accounts. It's a very powerful tool here. If you know how to use it, you can improve your hacking skill. And also if you want to administrate Windows operating system, it's very good some windows servers there's only the command line so you just execute commands throw the command prompt there will be no GUI what is called the graphical user interface so if you want to administrate windows or systems this is a good skill to learn and also it's very good to troubleshoot windows sometimes when you use windows there are some errors happening you can't solve those problems by Windows, but you can solve it by launching DOS and time some commands, and then you can troubleshoot Windows errors through DOS. So also, if you want to expand your IT skill, it's an important skill to learn. So now you know the benefits of using MS DOS. Let's start the journey of learning DOS together. I will see you in the next lecture. Welcome to the new lesson of MS DOS. In this lesson, I will show you how to open the command prompt DOS in multiple ways. So, the first here, the first shortcut here, you can just go click on the start menu, click on the Windows key on your keyboard, just type there CMD, and the command prompt will appear there. Just you press enter, and then you can open it. You can, if you want to open it as an administrator, sometimes there are some commands. If you don't open the command prompt as an administrator, it won't run. So to do that, simply you go again, click on the Windows key on your keyboard, and type there CMD. Just go there and right click on it and press on, click on run as an administrator, or you can just go here simply and click on run as an administrator. And you see here now we open the command prompt as an administrator. And also there is a shortcut very really good to, if you want to run the command prompt, just go simply open the run window by simply pressing Windows plus R on your keyboard and just type there CMD and press enter and you can just open the command prompt for that. And if you want to know where this program is located over Windows, you can go click on uh, start menu. If you go down there, if you go here to our Windows system, you see here so we have some programs there. The command prompt is inside there. If you want to know the location, just simply right click on it and go to more. Open file location and then click again on open file location there so you see we have here the command prompt is located in our C Windows System32 folder you can just go click on here open that if you want to run as administrator just right click and click on run as administrator and we have opened the command prompt administrator so this is how to open the command prompts in Windows through multiple ways I will see you in the next lecture In this lesson, I'll show you how you change the color of the command prompt. So, first we will open the command prompt. I press the Windows key plus the R button on the keyboard. Then we will type CMD and press enter. So, it opened now. To change the color, the command prompt, we type the command color. Then, 
followed by forward slash then question mark so here it gives us all the numbers and the letters from a to f to the colors so in order to change the color of the command prompt first we use the color for the background then we use the color for the foreground or for the text of the command prompt so let's do it practically so we'll type the command color then we choose any color for the background for example here I will change the background color to the to red so you see here the number 4 is assigned for the red color and I, I want to change the the foreground color or the text color to yellow so you see here the sixth number is assigned for the yellow color so first I will type the number of the color for the background then we will type the num number or the letter from A to F to the foreground or text or the text of the command prompt so for example here I will type the number 4 for the red to change the background color to red so I will type 4 then I will type the number 6 because I want to change the foreground color or text color to yellow so I will type 6 then I press enter and you see the colors has been changed the, fog the background color changed from black to red and the foreground color changed from white to yellow so another way to change the color of the command prompt we simply click on the title bar we simply right click on the title bar then we click on properties and then in properties we go to the colors tab and here you see the screen text and the screen background so now I will change back the color of the background to black so I, I choose here the screen black background so I'll change to black and we go to the screen text so I'll change it to for example to, to the color green so when I press ok it will change the color so as you see the color has been changed so there is a little difference between when we give the command color from the command prompt and when we t click here and to change it from the properties so when we change it from the properties so when we exit the command prompt and we come again the colors we have changed it will be as we change it the new colors so and when we do it through the command prompt when we give the color command and we change it from the command prompt when we exit the command prompt and we come again the colors will be the default colors of the command prompt the black and the white so we'll see here I will exit the command prompt and I come again and open it again and as you see the colors we changed through the properties it was the same colors we have changed through the properties so now I will be I will go again and change it to and change the colors of the text to its default color it's white and we press on ok and now I will change it from the command prompt I will type the command color then for by forward slash question mark and here I want to change the the foreground color or the text color for example here I will change it to to light blue I'll leave the background black and change the foreground color to light blue and this is then number 9 so I'll type color then 0 followed by the number 9 for the foreground color so I press enter and you see the colors has been changed so now I exit the command prompt and come again and you see the colors will be as its default and as you see the colors by its default black and white so this is a difference between when we type the command color from the command prompt and we change it from the properties so these are the ways to change the command prompt's color see you in the next lecture In this lecture, I'll show you how you change the time and the date of the system through the command prompt. So let's start.
so again I will open the command prompt I press the Windows key and R button on the keyboard to open run then you type CMD and you press enter again and now here to change the, the time of the system we type the command time then we press enter and as you see here at the bottom the time is 12.15 am so here it shows the time by 24 hours so it's 0 15 so I'll change the time from 12 15 to 1 15 so here I'll type 1 then 15 so as you see here it's changed from 12 15 to 1 15 and again I'll press it to 12 o'clock so again we type the command time and again 0 15 so as you see it changed 12 15 so to change the date of the system through the command prompt we change it through the command date so we type date so you see that the date is 5 20 2017 and you see here at the bottom 5 20 17 I will change 5 to 6 so I'll type 0 6 slash 20 slash 20 17 so I press enter and you see that the date will change and you see here the date has been changed so now again I will change it from 6 to 5 so again I'll type 0 5 So when I press enter, you'll see the bottom, the date will be changed. So sorry, I have I didn't type the command date. So now I will type 05. And you will see the date will be changed. So you see here it's changed from 6 to 5. So these are the ways to change the date and the time of the system through the command prompt. In this lesson, I will show you how you clear the screen of the command prompt and how you exit the command prompt. So let's start. So when we work a lot on the command prompt, the screen will be filled. For example, here tap so I will tap many commands, and you see the screen is filled. So it makes us not comfortable to see the screen or the command prompt is filled. So to clear the screen, we tap the command called clear screen. So we tap it by C L S. And is the shortcut for clear screen. So in press enter, you'll see the screen of the command prompt will be cleared. And as you see, the screen has been cleared. So if you want to exit the command prompt, so we can do it through the X button here. We can exit it. But also we have the command. When you type it, we can we can exit through it the command prompt. So we type the command exit so it will exit the command prompt so when you press enter you see we exit the command prompt so these are the ways to clear the screen of the command prompt and to exit the command prompt through these commands Welcome. Hope you learned lots of things about MS DOS and this lecture. So, thank you that you have proceeded with us up to this level. So, if you had any problem about MS DOS, if you didn't understand any point about MS DOS, feel free to ask a question. 
on the question and answer section. So I will answer your questions and hope you also give a review about the course and I hope it will be a great review. So don't forget to give us five stars. So it'd be just a click for you, but it will be a great thing for me. Also, don't forget to comment about the course. So I hope it will be a good comment and thank you again. If you have any question, feel free to ask a question on the question and answer section. In this lesson, I will show you how you show the contents of the folder through CMD. So let's start. So first I will open the command prompt. Then I will create a folder on the desktop. I will name it test. Then I will go and make another folder inside the folder test. Then I'll make another folder and hide this folder. So I go to its properties and hide it. So now I go to the command prompt and now I will change the directory from teaching folder to desktop directory to take one CD. Then we will change the folder of the desktop to the folder of test. So you tap CD test. Now you tap the command that shows as the contents of the folder. To show the contents of the folder, you type the command GIR. So I type DR, then you press enter. It will show us the contents of the test folder. So as you see here, it showed as folder 1. But we also we had another folder here, it was a folder 2. Then we hide it. So to show that folder, we type the same command dr then space, then followed by forward slash a. So as you see here, it showed at the both folders folder 1 and the folder 2 and also if you want only to show the hidden folders you type the same command dir space then followed by forward slash a and if you want to show only the hidden folders then we type h and we press enter it will only show us the hidden contents of the folder so you press enter so as you see it showed as only the hidden content of the folder. It was the folder 2 that we hide it. So this is a way to show the content of the folder through the command dir in the command prompt. In this lesson, I will show you how you change from one directory to another directory and how you change the different drives from the command prompt. So let's start. So as you see here now I am in the teaching folder. So now I'll enter to the desktop folder. So to do so we type the command cd and that stands for change directory. Then we type disk top. So I press enter and you see we will change the desktop folder. So this is how you change from one directory to another directory. But if you want to go like one step back, for example, here now we are now in a desktop 
directory. So you want to go back again to the teaching directory. So you type the same command cd followed by double dots. Then you press enter. As you see, you are one step back again to the teaching directory. So this is how you change from one directory to another directory. And this is how you go one step back. So if you want to go to the main drive, like for example now we are in the C drive in the users directory and then we are in the teaching directory. So how if you want to go back to the C drive, you can do that through the same command cd followed by forward slash. So we will go to the C drive. So as you see, we have went so step back to the main drive, C drive. And if you want to change from one drive to another drive, you do not type the, the command CD. Just directly type the name of the drive. Then we press enter and it will change. For example, here I want to change from the C drive to the D drive. I won't type CD then followed by D drive. It won't work. We type directly the D, the letter of the drive, followed by colon. You press enter, and it will change the drive. So, these are the ways to change from one directory to another directory, and to change from one drive to another drive. In this lesson, I will show you how you create files and folders through the command prompt and how you name it. So let's start. So first, I will change the directory from the teaching directory to the desktop directory. Then, to create a folder from the command prompt, use the command make directory and we type it like md then followed by the folder name that you want to create for example here i will name it test so we'll type test so as you see we have created the test folder also you can create it by another way the same command but with some difference we type mkgir make directory then we for example here I'll type it test2 so as you see we have made another folder to rename the folder to the command prompt we use the command rename and we type it like ren then followed by a directory or the folder name that you want to rename for example here I will rename the folder test so I type test then followed by the new name that you want to name it so I will type here test new so as you see we have changed the old name to the new name also you can change the folder name the same command rename but we type it completely like this then followed by the folder name that you want to change then we give the new name so as you see we have changed the name of the folder so to create a file through the command prompt we use a command called start so for example here i will make a file of notepad so first we type the command start then followed by the program of the file so you want to create a file that's a notepad file so you type notepad then followed by the name of the file that you want to create for example here I will name it test file then followed by dot and extension of the file of the program notepad is txt so we type dot then txt 
and press enter I ask us do you want to create a new file you say yes and as you see we have created a file here also if you want to create like for example Microsoft Word file you have the same command start and followed by the name of the program then followed by the name of the file and the dot and extension of that program so you type here So as you see, we have created the file of the text notepad and the file of the Microsoft Word. And to rename the file, we use the same command, rn. So followed by the name of the file that you want to change and its extension, and then the new name and with its extension. So as you see, we have changed the name of the file. So these are the ways to create folders and renaming it and to create files and renaming them to the command prompt. In this lesson, I will show you how you rename your computer to the command prompt. So open the command prompt. Then to rename our computer, use the command WMIC. It's a long command, so you can copy it. Then you type computer system. Then we type where caption equal then here we type the current name of the computer so we type type here current name then we type rename then we give here the new name of our computer that you want to change to it so for example here type new name when you press enter it will change the, the name of your computer because here I didn't give the current name and I didn't give a new name so if we did this command the computer name won't change until until you restart your computer so here I didn't do this command so you can do it and try it so you can do it and check it so this is how this is the command change your computer name to a new name In this lesson, I will show you how you copy and get files and folders through the command prompt. So let's start. To copy files, we have the command called copy. So for example, here I will copy the test new file to the folder test new. So you type the command copy and then followed by the file name that you want to copy. Then to the place or to the destination that you want to copy the file. So I'll copy the file test new to the test new folder. To do so, we tapped the command copy, then followed by the name of the file. Then you have to type the extension. You have to type the extension of the file. So you have to type here 
dot.txt because it's a file of a notepad so we have to type its extension and it's dot txt and then we want to copy this file to the folder test new so as you see the file has been copied and now you want to cut this file test new the folder test new so I'll delete this file to cut files and folders with the command prompt use a command called move so we have the command move then followed by the name of the file that you want to cut so here it is test new dot txt and then the place or the destination that you want to cut this file and it is here test new so as you see here it has been moved to this folder so to cut directories use the same command move for example here I want to cut the folder test new and I want to move to the test to new so I tap test to new as you see here the folder is empty so you press enter so you see the folder has moved to this folder so to copy folders to another folders use the same command copy We use the command x copy here so we do so we type x copy then you want to copy the contents of the folder test new type test new and you want to copy test new folder to a test to new so you see we had here one file and you see you have got it here too but how if you had here a folder a subfolder a subfolder inside this folder if you use the same command x copy and you want to copy the contents of the folder test new to the folder test to new and as you see here this folder is empty in the folder of the test new you have here a subfolder and a file and now you want to copy the contents of the test new folder the test to new you press enter and you see one file has been copied so so we see here the file been copied but you see here the subfolder didn't came to the new folder didn't came to another folder so to do so do the same command x copy then followed by forward slash e then test new test to new you type a then you come here again and you see we have copied the subfolder and the file with the folder test new to the test to new. So this command only it copies the contents of the folder to another folder. But if you want to copy the same folder to another folder, use the same command. For example, here top x copy. Then I want followed by forward slash e and test new to test to then we don't type directly the name of the new destination or we want to copy this folder to another folder we want to copy this folder to the new place or to another place we won't type the name of that place directly we have to type it completely 
you have to type the destination of that folder completely for example here i want to copy the folder test new to the copy to, to the folder test to new so now i have to type the complete destination of this folder so we'll tap here c because it's in the c drive backslash then go to the users directory then to the teaching directory and to the desktop then you want to copy to the test to new and again followed by backslash and now you see here we want to copy this folder test new we type here test new and I press enter it asks us here that does this test new specify a file name or directory name on the target so you want it's a directory so we type d and now we come here and we see so as you see we have copied the folder test new to this new place it's a test to new so these are the ways to copy and cut files and folders to the command prompt In this lesson, I will show you how you remove files and folders to the command prompt. So to remove files to the command prompt, use the command delete and we type it as DEL as a shortcut for delete. So here I delete this file of MS Word. So first, I will enter to the desktop directory. So then, type del, then the name of the file. And this is the name of the file. So I press enter, it will delete the file with the misboard. So as you see, the file has been deleted. So now, to delete folders to the command prompt use the command remove directory and when we use the, this command delete to delete folders it only deletes the contents of the folder but it doesn't delete the folder that we want so we do it practically so as you see we have contents in this folder test new so now i will use the command delete to delete the test new folder so I press enter type Y yes so as you see it only deletes the file or the folder that you want to delete so to delete or to remove the folder we use the command remove directory and we type it as like R M D I R then we type the name of the folder test new so here because that we have a subfolder inside this folder when you use this command directly it won't delete the folder because we have a subfolder inside it so we make a test so as you see it says the directory is not empty so delete the folder and the subfolders inside this folder with the same command rmvr then followed by slash s then the name of the folder so I press enter it's asking us are we are sure or not you can type yes why but here I won't use it because I want to show you something else type no so I type again the same command 
Then here I'll add slash q. And slash q, when you add it, it will delete the folder directly and it won't show us any confirmation message. It won't ask, ask whether are we sure to delete the folder or not. It will delete the folder directly. So we add slash q, then the name of the folder. So press it you see the folder has been removed. So you want to remove this folder too. It is too new. So we use the same command, but now we use it like we just type R D. Then we can move it to this too. Then we type the same slash s. Then followed by slash q. Then test to new. So open and press enter. You see the folder has been removed. So these are the ways to remove files and folders to the command prompt. In this lesson, I will show you how you create user accounts through the command prompt. So, to create an account through the command prompt, we type net, then we type user. After user, we want to create a new user. So we type slash, then add, then we type the new user account name. For example, here I will name it test. So I type test. Before doing so, I go to the control panel. And then I will go to user accounts. And then I will go to add or remove user accounts. And as you see, we have here two user accounts. Teaching user account and NZ user account. So I go again to the command prompt. And now I press enter and as you see it says the command completed successfully. So I go back and come again and as you see we have created a new user account by the name of test. So we had here two user accounts and both of them are administrators as you see here and here. But this new user account is a standard user. It doesn't have the administrator's privileges. So to make this user account as an administrator, we go to the command prompt and then we type the command net, then local group. Then we want to add this user to administrator's group. So we type administrators. Then you want to add this user and this is a user of test. So as you see the command has been completed successfully. And make sure before you do so you open the command prompt in administrator mode. So these are the ways to create user accounts with the command prompt and adding them to the administrators group. In this lesson, I will show you how you give the user account a password to the command prompt. So let's start. So first I will go to the control panel and then to the user accounts. And you see, you want to create a new user account. So we go to the command prompt, then use the same command net user then slash add then the new username 
and here I want to name it test then followed by the password for example here I want to give it this password then we press enter and you see it says the command complete successfully so we go back and come again and you see you have created the test user account and it's the password protected so now here I will, I will delete this account and I want to make a new user account and I want to give it a password but this time I want to give it a password and the password will be hidden so we'll use another way we type the same command first I will clean this use the same command now here instead of writing the password we type the asterisk sign when you press enter it asks us to give a password and when you give a password it will be hidden and it won't be shown on the screen so you see here it says type a password for the user now I'm typing the, the password so I'm typing it on my keyboard and I press enter it asks us to type it again and you see it says the command coming successfully and the password was not shown here so we go back and then come again we go to the user accounts and then we come here and click on it and you see we have created a new account with the name of test and this is a password protected so these are the ways to give a user account a password with the command prompt. In this lesson, I will show you how you remove user account with the command prompt so again I will go to the control panel then to user account and you see we have here the test user and it's an administrator user account so before removing this account to the command prompt we first want to remove this account from the administrators group so to do so we type command net then local group then administrators then we type slash delete and you type here slash d e l then these are account name and we press enter we go back and come again and you see it was administrator user and now it's a standard user so now we want to remove this user account so do so type the command net then user then because we want to delete this user account we tap slash delete then the user account that we want to delete and here is the test user account so you tap test and we press enter we go back and come again and as you see we have removed a test user account so these are the ways to remove user accounts with the command prompt In this lesson, I will show you how you work fast and work as a professional on the command prompt. If you want to be more productive working on a command prompt, so I will show you some tips and techniques that you can work fast and you can work as a professional on the command prompt. So let's start. I will open the command prompt. 
then I will here I'll go to the C drive type CD then slash AC we have went to the C drive so to enter the user's directory then we want to enter the teaching directory and then to the desktop directory we type as letters completely so we have another way a shortcut way if you do it you can do it very fast to enter the directories so before doing so I'll type the directories complete letters and then I'll show you another technique on how you do it fast so let's start so to enter the users directory we type cd then users cd then users then we type cd teaching then we type cd desktop we clear the screen we go back again the c drive so now i will show you here a tip how we do it fast so we type cd then on the keyboard we type the letter u because you see here the users directory starts with the letter u we type here u after we type u on the command prompt we press the tape key on the keyboard so it will complete the users directory letters automatically so I press the tab key on the keyboard and you see it's completed automatically and now I press enter and as you see we have did it fast so again I'll type the teaching directory I type cd then t then again I press the tab key on the keyboard and you see again I'll press the tab key so it comes down and down so again I press the tab key so I press enter and again I'll type cd then d if we had more than one directory starts by the letter D, it will go on and on until we discover the directory that we want. Or you can type it like as D after D we type E and as you can type then press on the tape key. It will be completed automatically. So again I will go and type D and then I press the tape key. Again I press it and you see we have moved to the documents directory. Again I will press the tape key. And again you want here the stop directory so press enter and as you see we have completed the commands very fast instead of writing all the letters on the directories so another tip and technique working fast on the command prompt for example here i will type the command dir then slash a before doing so i go to the previous teaching directory so we go one step back I clear the screen then I'll type here dir slash a and you see and again I'll type here another command for example here I want to make a directory type the command md then test test I press enter so now I will show here a technique we do it you can work fast on the command prompt and it's here it's called the arrow key completion so for example here we type some commands on the command prompt for example here we will type the command dir and the command md so i press the arrow key on the keyboard it will bring the commands that we have typed on the command prompt so we will see and again i'll press the up arrow key and you see it brought to as the command that you have written on the command prompt and now I press the down key down arrow key and you see brought the command that you have written on the command prompt so these are the tips and techniques to work fast and to work as a professional on the command prompt In this lesson, I will show you how we copy, paste, and cancel operations on the command prompt. So I open the command prompt, I press enter. Then, for example, here I will type the command dir, press enter. And for example, here now I want to copy this text. 
If you have an MS Word file or a Notepad file, you can simply select the text that you want and then copy it. But here in the command prompt, you cannot select the text directly. For example, here I want to select this text. So I press on the mouse. As you see, we cannot do it. So we do so. We right click on the command prompt. Then, before copying the text that you want, you mark it. For example, here I want to mark this text. And then, we just simply press the enter key on the keyboard. It will copy the text. Now, for example, here I want to paste that text here. We cannot press the control plus V on the keyboard to paste it. For example, I'm doing it here and you see, we cannot paste it. But if you want to paste it, we just simply right click on the command prompt and then we click on paste. And you see we have paste that text. And now I show you how you cancel operations on the command prompt. For example, here I type png bang then dash t then w dot google. So this command has many tasks and one of its tasks that it shows as the IP address of the website. So now I press the enter key on the keyboard. And you see the operations goes on and on. And now here I want, we want to cancel this operation. We simply press the control plus the C key on the keyboard. And you see we have canceled the operation. And as you see, it shows us here that we have pressed the control key plus the C button on the keyboard. So these are the ways to copy and paste and cancel operations on the command prompt. In this lesson, I will show you how you open your desired location, a shortcut how to open your desired location to the command prompt. For example, here in the command prompt, if you want to enter any directory, we type the command cd. Then for example, here we want to enter the desktop directory, we type desktop. And again, again, if you want to go furthermore, we type cd and then we enter that folder. So I'll show here a shortcut how to open a, is your desired folder the command prompt for example I go to my computer so here I go to C drive for example here users my user and you see here on the top this is the location for this folder and my pictures so if I want to enter this folder to the command prompt you have to type CD and then again again we enter one folder by one so a shortcut to enter this destination in the command prompt simply we type we click here on the bar then we type cmd and it will open this location to us on the command prompt so you see here look this location has been opened in the command prompt and this location was the c drive in the users directory and then my user directory and then pictures directory so this is a shortcut how to open your desired location from the explorer to the command prompt. In this lesson, I will show you how you copy the output of the command prompt to the clipboard. So open the command prompt. Then, for example, here I'll copy the output of the command ipconfig slash r. So, if we want to copy the output of this command, so the command prompt we simply right click, then we click on mark, and then we mark all of it, then we press enter. But 
to copy it easily we tell the command for example here IP config slash all then if you want to copy the output of this command to the clipboard simply then we type clip so this will copy the output of this command to the clipboard so for example here I will open the notepad program and if you paste it and you see you have pasted the output of the IP config slash all command to the notepad program sometimes we if we need to copy the output of any command in the command prompt you can simply copy the output of it to this command and you can paste it anywhere that you want so this is how to copy the output of the command prompt command to the clipboard Welcome to a new lesson. In this lesson I will show you how to enable copy paste in command prompt. It's very useful to enable that. So you'll go there and just bring command prompt. So to enable the command prompt, first of all, for, if you, uh, for example, I type here some commands. For example, I type here the ping command, uh, ping the Google website. So you see here after we just ping the Google website, you just got the IP address of Google. For example, now here or just I want to copy this. It's very useful to do that. Simply you go here and just right click on the, the title of our of, of the command prompt and just go there and click on properties. So you see down here we have some options there. We did those options. You will be just Take more this option which says enable control key shortcuts just click on that and press ok so now for example here we want to just copy this one you can just uh, you can select the text or the number you want and after that you just can press enter or, you, or just you go there and press on, on control c on your keyboard so now, now I i'll go there to my browser and i'll paste the ip address there press enter so you see we have just brought Google by its IP address there and even if you want just copy here maybe sometimes you need to copy something for outside command prompt and just go and paste it there just go there and go here and then after that we type controls control V just to paste there the URL so I press enter again we go there So it's a good feature. So sometimes you may need this one. It's very good to enable the copy paste feature inside our command prompt. It's very useful and, and it will increase our productivity. This is how to enable copy paste inside our windows, inside our command prompt. And we'll see you in the next lecture. In this lesson, I'll show you some network commands that we use on the command prompt. So the first command that we want to use here is a command called ping. And we use this command to know whether we are connected to the internet and whether the internet is working or not. For example here I'll ping this to the Google website and you see it says here it's pinging the Google website and here we have pinged the Google website and also this command gives us the IP address of the website and you see this is the IP address of the Google website. For example here I will mark this IP address. I'll copy it then I'll paste it here on the browser. 
and I press enter and as you see the Google web page has been opened so we go back again to the command prompt so another command that you use on the command prompt use a command called trace root and we type it as this trace rt and this command we use it for troubleshooting the network through this command we know where is the problem so now I'll trace root the website Google and to reach a website we don't connect directly to the website before connecting directly to the website we go on some other servers we pass some points and at the end we will reach the website for example we are in a country and we want to connect to our website which is in another country so it will pass some points until we reach at the end the website that you want to connect to so we leave this until it reads the end point the website that you want so as you see it passes some points until at the end it reaches the websites that you want so it will take a little time so if you had any problem on the network it will be shown to us here that in some point you'll have the problem so we know whether we the problem is from the ISP or whether from it's our router so through this command we can troubleshoot the network and you see the trace route has been completed so another network command we used on the command prompt is called the command net state and this command shows us the active connections and the active ports in our PC then we type dash a so as you see here it just shows us the active connections the local address the foreign address and the state whether it's lessening or whether it's established so as you see we have established here a connection to the Google website and we come here and you see here it's a HTTPS protocol and as you see here at the top we have the HTTPS protocol so these are the ways to use the network commands to the command prompt in this lesson I will show you how to view the files and folders that are being shared in your network so to know the shared files and folders in your network simply go to the command prompt and then we type the command net followed by share so this command will show to us the shared files and folders in our network so you see here the share name and the resource and remark so this is the share name for this resource the C drive and these these drives is been shared by Microsoft by default so the C drive the D drive any drive I have three drives on my PC so as you see these three drives are shared in my PC these drives are shared by default by Microsoft so if you shared any files and folders through your PC or another PC in your network so to show those 
shared files and folders, use this command on the command prompt. In this lesson, I will show you how you share a folder or a directory to the command prompt. So you open the command prompt. Then I will make a folder in the desktop. So I'll enter the desktop directory. Then I'll make here a directory. For example, here I'll name it ABC. So the folder has been created. So now I'll share this folder throughout the network. So to share it, we type the, we type the command net, then share. Then we choose a name for this folder to be appeared on the network. And for example, here I will choose a name. So I type one, two, three. Then you type equal. Then you type the destination for this folder that you want to share. And you see it's here on the desktop. The C drive, so we'll so we'll mark this destination. And I will paste it here. And we type the folder name that you want to be shared on the network, and it's here. A B C. So I press enter; it will be shared on the on the network. So you see, it says here, this folder was shared successfully. So to see. Whether it has been shared or not, we type the command net share and this command will show to us the shared folders and drives on our network. So I press enter. So as you see here, we have shared this folder. Yeah, here it's a resource and it's the share name. We have choose one, two, three, the share name for the ABC folder and that's the resource. So this is how you share a folder or a directory throughout the network to the command prompt. In this lesson, I will show you how you turn your PC into a Wi-Fi hotspot to the command prompt. So let's start the command prompt. So we do so we type the command net sh then wlan then hosted network then you type mood low then you type SID and then we give here the network name, the hotspot name, for example here name it test net. Then we'll give it a password. To give the password we type key equal, then we give it any password. For example, here type one two three one two three. So when we press enter it will create a Wi-Fi hotspot in our on our PC. So I won't do it, I won't press enter because here I'm currently I'm not connected to a network, a local network. So my PC is not connected to a cable. If you have a cable network and then it is active on it, so you want to share it to other devices through your computer, you can use this command, the command prompt without any other softwares. So this will only turn your device, your PC into a Wi-Fi hotspot. So to turn it on or turn it off, we use another command. So I show here the other command. After you, ty you type this command, if you want to turn it on, type net sh. Then we type wlan. Then we st type start hosted network. So you press enter, it will then activate. It will then turn on your hotspot Wi Fi. So here, currently I'm not, I didn't activate the hotspot Wi-Fi on my PC so I won't do it then and then after we did this and you want to stop it type the same command net sh then wlan then you type stop instead of start you type hosted network 
so this will stop the hotspot Wi-Fi on your PC so this is how you turn your PC into a hotspot Wi-Fi you want to share internet to other devices you have a net on your PC and you are connected to a, through a cable and you want to share it In this lesson, I will show you how you know the version of the command prompt that you use and how you get the all information about our system. So I will open the command prompt. So to know the version of the command prompt that you are using, we use the command cmd. So as you hear, we are using this version. 6.1 and on so knowing the version of the command prompt helps us a lot because some command prompt versions do some commands and some not so to know the version of the command prompt is important another way to know the version of the command prompt is we use the command ver version so press enter and you see here the version is 6.1 and this is also same so this is the way to know the version of our command prompt so to get all the system information to the command prompt use a command called system info this stands for system information so I press enter so now it's loading the information and we go up and you see here gives all the information the host name the operating system name is Microsoft Windows 7 and the version of it and the manufacturer Microsoft and all the information the origin date install date system boot time system manufacturer is a Dell PC and system model, the processor and all the information gives us here. You can read it and you get all the info through this command. And also here the network cards, the Ethernet adapter, the wireless adapter. So this is the way to get the version of the command prompt we are using and to get all the system information to the command prompt. In this lesson, I will show you how you rename a drive the PC and how you get the name of that drive and how you format hard disk or a flash drive the command prompt so again I'll open the command prompt so for example here I want to get the name of the drive D so you type the command V O L that stands for volume so here we want to get the name of the D drive so we type D followed by colon so I press enter so as you see volume in drive D is programs so programs is the name of the D drive so we'll go to the my PC so you see here the D drive name is programs so to change this drive name we type the command label so through this command we can change the drive name so then we type the drive name here it's a D drive then give the new name and for example here I will name it test so I press enter so again I will get the name of that drive and you see here it's changed from programs to test so this is how you get the name of the drive and how you rename it to format any 
drive whether it's a hard disk drive or whether it's a flash drive with the command format I see here I have flash drive and its volume name is ABC and it's a G drive I go here we make a file here for example here I will name it test file so go back and I will go to the command prompt and I will format test drive and you see here it's a G drive so I type G then before doing so I want because of here I want to format it quickly so if you want to format it quickly we type slash Q then followed by the drive name and here it's a G drive so I type G then followed by colon so I press enter so it asks us here when the drive is ready or when the flash is ready so press enter so I press enter and now it's doing the operation as you see the file system is FAT32 and we are quick formatting the flash drive now this is the size of the drive the flash drive and here it has the volume label so we give it a name for example here I will give it a test flash so press enter so you see here it says format completed and this is the total disk space and this is which is available and this is the serial number of the drive and here I go to C drive and come again I see here we have changed the name of the drive and we have formatted this drive and we go back to the drive I see here we had a file we made a file so the notepad fell so we have formatted our flash drive successfully so this is how you get the name of the hard disk drive and you have your name it and how you format a hard disk drive or how you format a flash drive to the command prompt In this lesson, I will show you how you create programs in the command prompt. So to do so, we open the Notepad program. We type Notepad and run. So after we open the Notepad program, we type the same command that we were typing in the command prompt to start a program. So we use the command start then for example I make a program that opens uh, for example a Firefox browser so then I type the name of the program for example I type here Firefox .exe. and then this is it then you have to save it as a .bag file so for example, I will name this file Firefox program. Then, after that, we give it the bat extension BAT. And this extension opens the files in the command prompt. So, I'll save it in the desktop. So, as you see, you have saved it there. I will close the third page. So, I click on it and you see the, the Firefox browser will start. So as you see we have started the Firefox browser. Again you can make Google Chrome starting program. So you can open the notepad, type start, then Chrome, then again save it a dot be at file. So let's save it and Again, and open it. I see start this program starts the Google Chrome browser for us. And also, when you want to get any code of this two command prompt programs, you simply right click on that program and then simply click on edit and it will open in the notepad. So, you see, you can see the code of that program. And as you see, we have typed that code you see on the screen. And also, you can give it an icon so you can change it and make it 
what you really like it looks like so this is how you make programs to the command prompt In this lesson, I will show you how you make a call creator program to the command prompt. So again, we'll open the notepad program. Then you'll get the source code file, which is attached to this lesson. So we click on the source code that we have. Then you copy this source code press ctrl a to select all then we press ctrl c to copy and then we paste it in the new notepad file so after that we again save this file a dot bat file so we name this file a calculator program Then we save it as a .bat file or anywhere. For example, I will save it here on the desktop. So now we run this program. And you see in the top, it's a calculated program. It's calculated made by Abdul Rahman Yazi and his skills. So you can multiply, you can add, you can subtract, you can divide. So we press any key. For example here I'll type 10 plus 10 so I press enter and you see the result again 20 minus 10 plus 10 I see we have made a calculator through the command prompt so this is source code and you can edit on this source code simply right click on the program edit for example you can change here instead of my name you can type your name you can give it any name for example I change this to any name and I'll save it and you see I change the name so you can put your name and amaze your friends and family so this is how you make a calculator program the command prompt in this lesson I'll show you how you make a system information program the command prompt so again I'll open the notepad program so after we open the program then we open the source code which is attached to this lesson and then we press ctrl a to select all the code then we copy this and we paste it here on the new notepad file so again we save it save as then we give tiny name for example here i'll name it system says info so then we give it the extension of dot bat and then we save it on the desktop so you open this program and you will see it will give us all the system information so you see here as we did before the so assist system info command which gives us all the information about our system so you see this is all the information the host name the operating system name the version the manufacturer and on and on then it will card and on and on so I press any key it will close, close the program then we come here to the source code so I see here in source code this is the title and title is system information program I see the title displays what we wrote there I see we wrote the system information program it comes here system information program and then we give the command the command was system info so this command gives us all the information then we wrote pause 
and it poses this here to here to us so press any key it will exit so for example here I will delete this post command and save it and I run the program and you see it lost information then it will close it it won't pause so we have to, to give the pause command so again I'll give the pause command and save it and play it again and you see it pause the program to us and at this command here echo of it won't display the commands which we are given here in the command prompt so for example here I'll cut this and I'll save it and I'll open the program and again I see here the first we gave the command title and then we named it and you see here title and the name then we give the command system info and again you see here system info and at the end you see we have given the command pause and here it gives us pause command it displays to as pause program so we don't want to show this on the command prompt just read we want to command prompt run those commands but you don't want to display those commands on the command prompt so here we type the command echo of so again I save it and I run the program again and you see this time the title command didn't appear and the system info command didn't appear but it does the commands but it won't display to us that commands written in let by letters in the command prompt but it lets those commands to run on the command prompt and come at the end and you see as we have written there pause it didn't here it didn't appear but it really works so press any key and we have exit the program so this is how you make a system information program with a command prompt In this lesson, I will show you how you hide files and folders with a command prompt. So let's start. So first, I'll get a file and a folder on the desktop. So enter the desktop directory. And then here I'll make a folder. And I'll make a file too. So let's see we have made a folder and a file on our desktop so before doing so I'll go to the folder and search options and then be sure to check the don't show hidden files folders or drives and also to tick mark the hide protected operating system files then now here We'll hide this file, the test file. So we use the command add trip. Then we type the name of the file that you want to hide, and here it is test.txt. You don't want to hide it. Then we type plus h and we press enter. And you see. We made the file hidden. To show the hidden files, we go to the folder and then we go to folder and search options and then we, we, we go to the view tape and here we check the show hidden files, folders and drives and then we apply it and you see it showed to us the hidden files. So again, now we will unhide this file. So again, we type the same command, attrib, 
then we type the name file here as test.txt then instead of typing plus h we type minus h and we press enter and you see the file became unhidden so again we'll go to the folder search options to the view tape then we check here don't show hidden files folders or drives so to make the file more hidden and more secure we type the same command here I trap then the file name and here is test then we type plus h and then we with plus h we also type plus s and that makes the file this file hidden and also it makes it a system file so we press enter and you see we hide the file so again we go to the folder and we the view tape and here we check the show hidden files for us and drive and when you apply it it won't show to us the hidden files and the system files that are hidden so we apply it and you see the file is been hidden till now so to unhide this file with the organize and you go to view tape and here we uncheck hide protect over system files because we made that file a system file plus a hidden file so we uncheck it we press on yes and then we apply it and you see it showed to us the hidden the test file press ok so here now we will unhide this file and get it out of the system files so we type the same command as rip then test.txt then minus h then minus s so press enter and again we got this file out of system files and we unhide this files so I'll go here and again I'll make it as normal so we check this and we check this too so I apply it and you see you can hide this file and get this file out of system files so this is how you hide your files and folders the command prompt and how you make a file a system file In this lesson, I will show you how you protect your privacy and how you encrypt your files. So, open the command prompt and then we enter the desktop. For example, here I will make a folder here. Let me test. Then inside this folder, for example, I want to encrypt the files inside this folder. So, I, I make here a notepad file. So I type, for example, I'll name it my file. Then inside of this, for example, I have any text. I will close it, save it, and then we come again to the command prompt. So if you want to encrypt this folder, so we type the we enter, we enter this folder first. So after we enter this folder, simply we type the command cipher then slash e so this command will encrypt the files inside this folder so you see it has been encrypted so if there are many users on your pc so if, if someone to tr tries to open the files inside this folder he cannot open the file inside this folder because it's encrypted so this is how you protect your privacy and how you encrypt your files with the command prompt In this lesson, I will show you how you use the command prompt as a hacker. 
and show you some tips and tricks if you want to amaze your family and friends using the command from the hacker so we open the command from so first we'll change the color from the black white to black and green uh, this color hackers use usually type color then we type 2 and press until to change the color to black and green so you see color has been changed so now you want to change the title of the command prompt to our choice so we type title then you can type anything that you want for example here type uh, You can type what you want so you see the title of the command prompt has been changed so also if you want to change this destination to our choice so we type the command prompt then followed by our choice name for example here we type so you see it has been changed so you can type anything as you want and they can you can impress your family and friends you are using the command prompt as a hacker so this is how you use the command prompt as a hacker and amaze your family and friends In this lesson, I will show you how you hack user accounts with a command prompt. So I will open the command prompt. So we'll go to the control panel and then to user accounts. And again, we'll make an account by the name of test. So you go to the command prompt and make an account by the name of test to type net then user then slash add then test so you press enter you go back and come again I see you have made an account by the name of test so now we make this account add an administrator user so we go back and add this user to administrators group so we type net then local group then administrators then we type slash add then test you go back and come again and now we give this for example here this account is a password protected so you create a password for this account give it any password So as you see this is a password protected user it's also an administrator user so if there are many user accounts on the PC so to, if you want to hack and to hack it to change its password so simply you go to the command prompt and here you have to be logged in as an administrator and you have to open the command prompt in administrator mode so we to do so we type net then we type here user then you want to change this user account password you want to change its password so we type test then we give the asterisk sign then you press enter so here as you see the here the test user is a password protected and here you can change its password and it won't ask as its current password so you can give it a new password without asking as the current its current password for example here I will give it a new password and that's it you have hacked that account you have changed that user account password so this is how you hack user accounts to the command prompt to defend against these attacks you have to give other accounts you have to make those accounts a standard user accounts 
you don't have to make them as an administrators. So this is how you protect yourself. And this is how you hack user account to the command prompt. In this lesson, I will show you how you get the passwords for the Wi-Fi network connections that your PC has been connected to. So let's start. So I will open the command prompt. Then we'll type the command net sh, then wireless local area network wlan, then we type show, then we type profile. So as you see, these are the profiles that my PC has been connected to, the wireless networks. So here, for example, here I have a profile named Mango. So I will get the password for this profile. So I'll create the screen. So to get the password for that profile, we have the same command net sh double line show profile then we type the profile name and here i want to take the password for the wi-fi profile that is named mango so i type mango then after type we type key equal clear so so it will give me the password and other information related to this profile So you see this is the name of the SID and here also you see SID name, the profile name, there are other informations, the connection mode, as you see it's connect automatically and at the end you will see here the security settings, authentication, it's WBA2 and at the end here you see the key content, it's the password for this network profile and this is the password so this is how you get the password for the Wi-Fi network connection that your PC has been connected to In this lesson, I will show you how you hack websites the command prompt. So to hack a website the command prompt, you use an attack called DOS attack and it stands for denial of service, DOS attack denial of service attack. We open the command prompt and then you use the command ping as we have studied before then you type the target website google website then i will press enter and see here we have pinged the website google.com um, we have discovered its ip address and we have pinged the Google website with 32 bytes of data. So we have sent four packets, and you see here, it gives us information. We have sent four packets, and we have received three. One is lost, and every packet was a 32 bytes. And so to attack a website, we ping it with lots of packets. And we ping it a lot. So we type ping here, then we type dash t. So it will ping it. We'll send that target unlimited packets. We won't send it just four packets. We type dash t, then dash l, then you type here 65500. Then we type the target websites. For example, here is google.com. 
So we press enter. So then we start pinging the website. We start sending packets to the target website. So this will stack the server of that website. So receiving lots of packets will make the server heavy. So it become out of service. So here we have a slow net, so it won't work a lot. So if you have a fast net internet, you can try it. You can check it. And now we cancel this operation. We press Control C. Then I also understand when you just do this when you ping the website, the website can discover your IP address. And also to defend yourself against these types of attacks, you can use a DOS attack prevention service. For example, there are some websites that provide service against those attacks that can prevent websites against those attacks denial of service attacks for example here we have a website called cloudflare so this attack um, provides services for websites and can also defend the website against the denial of service attacks so this is how you defend so this is how you attack websites the command prompt and how you defend yourself and how you defend your website to this kind of attacks. In this lesson, I will show you how you get help to the command prompt. So open the command prompt. So you get help to the command prompt. For example, you want to get information about a specified command. So you type, for example, here, command D I R. Then to get information about this command, simply we then type slash then question mark. So when we press enter, it will give us a detailed information about this command. So you see, we have used this command to show the contents of a directory. So you see it says here, displays a list of files and subdirectories in a directory. And also we use the dir with the slash a to view all the contents of the folder. And also we use it with the attribute h to show the hidden files. So this is how you get help about a specified command and how you get information about a specified command. So another way to get help Simply we type help in the command prompt. So this command will give us all the commands that the command prompt and the DOS version support those commands. So press enter and you see we have used the help command here and it lists all the commands with alphabetic letters from A to Z. So you see here we use the command attrib and command cd and the command cls to clear the screen and so on command cmd command color and so on it gives you information about every command and to get a detailed information about a specified command we use the command then followed by slash then question mark as we did before so this is how you get the complete information about the commands the command prompt also, if you want to get information about a command, you can go to the web. So you can go to Google. And for example, here we use the command DIR. And there's a very good website which gives you a detailed information, which is called Computer Help. So we went to this website. And you see here, we have used, it gives us the information about the DIR command. As you see here, the DIR command allows you to see the available files and directories in the current directory and so on. And it also give you the syntax how you use the DIR command. You see here, use with slash A and H and so on. And one thing is good in this website, which it gives you real examples. So you see here, it gives us uh, examples about command DIR. So this is how you get help, the command prompt, how you get help about a specified command, how you get help about all the commands that MS-DOS version supports, and how you get help through the web.